like on the surface, all things work together for good for those that love you and are called according to your purpose, Father. Sometimes we look at our purposes and our plans and what we think should happen in life. But Lord, we, we believe as a people here this morning that what is unfolding is good. And it may not taste good and it may not feel good, but in the totality of life, it is good because you are working all things, not some things, not the things we want. We're thankful for that this morning. Lord, I ask as we continue to move in the things that you have showed us, Lord, that the, the real gospel, not half of the gospel, but the real gospel, Father, that will continue to infiltrate not our, just our minds, but it would go into our hearts. Lord, help us to see that we don't have to fight the way that we were fighting before, that you have given us a new strategy. We heard at the table about a strategy that is resting, not trying, but trusting in what has already been accomplished. I thank you, Jesus, that you were the law giver and you became the law liver, that we just trust in your life and you live through us. Help us to see the wiles of the devil. Help us to see that he's coming to kill, steal, and destroy, but in a manner that is insidious and he is sneaky and he's trying to have us live a life about religion and sin management, but that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, help us to take the shackles off. Help us to live free the way that you intended us to live. Amen. All right, children, thank you for moving this up. Teachers, you may take off. I would just caution you. I would just warn you as you leave outside the doors here and you head next door, that you just take a look up in the sky and make sure there are no balloon fragments that are going to come down and hit you. Is that one of the weirdest stories you have ever heard in your entire existence? Yes. That is not a excuse me, that is not a political statement. That is anything. That is just bizarre, right? You just lived through an episode of the Twilight Zone. Right? I feel like Rod Serling like, came back and we were living through that. Well, if you have not been here and you're walking in, first of all, we, we are in the middle. We've been talking in a series about our, our one word as a church, and the word is what? Contend. And we've been talking about contending, but it looks a little bit different. And the word contend, what it means, it connotes to, to strive and to move forward. But we're talking about contending by really resting. Right, and what has already been done, what has been finished. I had a lot of illustrations the last two weeks. Pastor Linda has been doing stuff on Wednesdays. It's kind of it's the same message that you've been hearing, just in a different way. And can I just set the stage? We're actually gonna have a conversation this morning. We feel it's important that instead of just going ahead and giving a traditional sermon, and by the way, can I tell you, I know a lot about church history, right? Nowhere in the Bible, I know the Bible and, and looking at church history, nowhere in the Bible preacher is a pastor is supposed to get up and give a 30 to 40 minute sermon. I hope you realize that, right? I don't know, but that's what we've been so conditioned to. And that's people in the church. What do you mean? You're not giving a traditional. No, you're not getting a traditional sermon this morning. You're getting something that's better than that. All right. So anyway, here's my, here's my illustration to kind of get us into where we have been and where we are, I think as the church and as Christians, how many of you know the name Plato, Greek philosopher, Right? Socrates, Plato. Well, in Plato's Republic, he has what is called, and some of you may know this already, but I think it's just a really great, poignant illustration of what we're talking about. He has the allegory of the cave, right? And that's really a story that was written by Socrates. If you've never heard that before, in the story of the, this allegory of the cave, a story with a, with a deeper like meaning, there are people that since the time they were young, these are men... And they're fastened to these places. They cannot turn around in this cave that is really deep underground. There's a long like tunnel that leads out to the light, out to like civilization. So here are the people, and they're sitting there, and they can't even move their heads the way they're fastened. And they're staring at a wall. From the time they're younger, that is the reality of the world in which they're presented. Now behind them, which they can't see, there is a fire that is behind them. 
and between them and the fire is a, is a long like passageway, roadway, that people are walking by. So they're walking by and they're talking and they're doing their things. The people that are here that are fastened in these chains, all they see on the wall is the light that is emanating from the fire and they see the people, they hear the conversations and they see shadows and figures. They never see the people. And in the allegory of the cave, what's so fascinating, again, that's the reality of the world in which they've lived in. Now, to take a person and to unchain them and then to turn them around, think about what, if, you, if that's all you've known for your entire life, what the fire would be like to see the fire and to see real people, not shadows, not figures, but to see the real thing. And then if someone were to take you and say, come on, I'm going to lead you out of this passageway and take you out here. These are trees. This is like, this is that, this is that. You go, no, I, I want to go back to what I have known my entire life. This is my reality. This is what I think is real. Come on. That's good. That is an amazing picture, what I just told you, of what the gospel is and how it has been presented, I think, to a lot of people. And what you're hearing from the pulpit is that this is the life, the gospel. We've heard half of the gospel, that it's about sin management. This is legalism. And, and for so much of my life, I've been like the elder brother in the story of the prodigal son. God has so much more for us. And that's what we're doing. We want to continue the conversation this morning. I'm going to have Pastor Linda come up. And we're just going to talk. We talk a lot. Right? Sometimes talk about church things, not church things, life, whatever. But today we're going to be talking about this. I am going to be asking her some questions. If you were around, we started this kind of in COVID. And when COVID hit, we'd have conversations. I think, listen, this is for a people that are hungry, that really want this. So I hope this has been resonating with you. I, I don't know, but I got to tell you, when's the last time the reaction that you got from people over the course of the past months... People know, people know yeah. this is real. Yeah. People are done living by rules, yeah. self-effort, sin management. Yes. So where did this start for you? Why don't you, why don't you begin there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, where did it start for me? Um, hmm. Well, I can tell you that uh, the origins of this local church, uh, which started how many years ago? Um, we started leading in 84 maybe, but 10 years before that, and there's a few people here that were also involved uh, in the original church that was begun in um, 10 years earlier than that. And um, <clears throat> it was an outshoot of um, a group of churches that actually had their birth in China uh, by a man called Watchman Nee. And if you do any research about Watchman Nee, he wound up actually die in a concentration camp, a uh, prison camp, was there for 20 years for his faith. And uh, he sent, uh, when the communists came in, a few of his disciples were sent to America. And thank God because they brought his teaching. And, and Watchman Nee will always be probably my most prominent father in the Lord um, because he had a revelation of, uh, he was out of the box, and, um, and let me just say that, let me just say that, you know, some of you in the Bible studies that you're doing too, you start to understand church history at all, or the epistles, you realize the fight was right there in the first century church. The battle for the flesh and spirit is right there, and so as, as, as time went on, a few hundred years, the church started losing more ground and more ground and more ground, and, and the world came in and to the church as Constantine uh, made it a, uh, the religion of the Roman Empire. And so I just want to say that God has been recovering truth, and, and the battle for flesh and spirit has been all of these, these years. So to your question. So we had, this church began kind of, um, we were kind of rebelling. We were, our 
the teaching from Watchman Nee about the fact that Christianity is not outward things that you do. Christianity is an indwelling life. And, and, and that church, uh, as, we had, how, as we all grew up and knew it, was really um, keeping people in bondage from really knowing that inner life and substituting, you know, in traditional churches, whether it was the candles and the rituals, and everything became outside, particularly the, the Western church. The Eastern church hung on for a while, but the Western church quickly. So I can say that when this church started, James, um, there was always this battle to, there's got to, there's more than we feel, not in a superior, self-righteous, you know, we've got to... <coughs> But always there was a group of people in this place and others that we know around Long Island and, and, and other places who knew that there was something more to the Christian life. So I can say that most of my Christian life has been um, a journey uh, of a journey that at the, at the heart of it was rebelling against what I feel now looks clearer to me. And it's really been rebellion. It's really been a system that in, in so many ways has been built by man. See, we can, uh, we can all say... Can well, I stop you for a second? Sure. I want to interject. Yeah. I want you to give an elevator speech of what we've already talked about. What, just what talked about just now? Or? No, no, no. I, I want you to give the elevator speech. For anybody that's in here and they're listening to you, it's yeah. really good. Give me a quick synopsis of what we've been talking about. Distill yeah. it down to something that is so simple. Okay. What, what is the main crux of what has been coming on Sundays and Wednesdays for the message that, is, that has been yeah. going you, forth? You're kidding, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what? Seriously, I need a little, I need a little love from, in, from, the, from the church because I live with teachers. I'm and not. they're I'm always not. doing this to me. Jen was like, oh, Mom, when you talk to anybody, 45 minutes, Mom, that's it. After that, I'm like, what? 45 minutes? I've never talked to anybody for 45 minutes in my life. So I just need a little love from the church, please. No, no, wait, everyone's um, I'm, I'm just saying. I, I know you're a teacher, and, mm -hmm, and I get it. Um, Am I going to get in trouble later? Probably. Uh, <laughs> I, I know, and, th and that's what I said. In I started... Okay, in May. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> See what I'm saying? All oh, you teachers, you're all on his side. I know it. I won, right? You noticed? Yeah. I, yeah. But she said in May. I'm well, like, I'm going to go back again. Oh. Dan, are you with me? Are you with me? Thank you, Dan. And you're a principal, so you're with me. Thank you. Okay. So I, I realized, I realized about 10, year, 10 years ago, even more seriously than I ever knew before, that I was swimming in bad theology all of my Christian life. And slowly God started to open my eyes over the last decade of my life, and it had, it's, it's blown me away. Not that, if you had asked me, I would have doctrinally been able to tell you the truth, but walls blew up. I saw things that I knew intellectually were true, but suddenly God was giving me the grace to live in the reality of it. Um, so and, experiential. And, Experientially, yeah, yeah. experiencing what I knew was, what knew. I mean, maybe I touched it. I, I certainly can't say I never touched it, but to live in the good of it was not something I lived all my life in. And so the last 10, eight years in particular, and last year, the Lord said to me, start talking about it on Wednesday. I'm going to start a fire. And, uh, and brothers and sisters, I, I, what I really, I really want, I believe God wants to do this morning is I so hope everybody leaves here with hope. I don't care where you are uh, on this scale. I don't know if you maybe you've never been born again and you don't know the Lord. I, I don't care if you've walked with God as, you know, as decades. There is something on the precipice. God is doing something that is... Um, so revolutionary. The day we live in demands it. And I want everybody to be excited about the fact that um, um, he's ready to do something new in your life. He's ready to do something new in all of our lives. We heard about the finished work. We, we've got to have it. Um, we've got to receive it. We've got to receive it. You know, there's a verse that many people talk about. Um, and are quoting these days. It's from the book of Daniel. It's Daniel 12, 
four. Um, and it, this, I'm going to read it to you from the amplified version. And this is what it says. This is um, an angel speaking to Daniel about the last days. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Then many shall run to and fro and search, and search anxiously through the book. And knowledge of God's purposes as revealed by his prophets, shall be increased and become great. And the Don't Amplified Version... Don't get me started version, on chat, Chibi, Sorry? Chat, Chibi, like AI, and we're going to get into all that. That's yeah, where, yeah. That's where I'm taking that. Yeah, so when you think about what, what we see up. on the scene of AI and all the things that yeah. we... We know that God, it, either we come out of this... Either we really see the reality of Jesus and who he is and, and the reality of what he's done for us, uh, or I, I don't know that anybody's really going to be able to live uh, above the powers. You know, if I were to ask most people, if when we sit here on an Easter Sunday, I bet most of you, we're sitting here and we're saying, yeah, it's the resurrection of Jesus, right, hallelujah. But if we went around and asked well, most of us, we would realize that for most of us, what we're really celebrating on that day is the fact that, yes, we know he was dead, and he's alive again, and when I die, I too will be raised again. I, I won't stay in that grave. I'm going to live again, and also, my sins are forgiven. And that's mostly what the church celebrates Fire on insurance. Easter Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. The church, fire insurance. Fire insurance. Got it. That's yeah. what the church really is. Maybe think about it. Maybe that's what, what have you been celebrating on Easter? The truth is that the cross has really two very clear, distinct um, people it's aiming at. One is for those who don't know him at all. And one is for the saints. And we, we will talk about it. And, and all we really hear in Western, the Western church, is the gospel for sinners. We don't really yeah, stay know. Stay there. That's good. Well, we that's haven't. The, yeah. We, we haven't. Ahead. I think. The crux yeah. Of, I think I was going somewhere. Wait a minute. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 look at it this way. So, really, what we're celebrating is my sins are forgiven. Yay! And when I right. get there, to that place, it's. Better be good. I uh, hope it is, but hallelujah. And I, and I believe I'm not going to have my, and my sins aren't going to meet me. Hallelujah. But in the meantime, the, res the penalty here. of sin has been yeah. paid. But the power of sin today, well, do the best you can, guys. That's good. Did you get that? Everyone getting this? It's powerful. Do, do the best you can. That's yeah. really what the church, his message is for the most. When I say Western and Eastern, one of the reasons even uh -oh. today the Eastern church has more reality than we do is because they have persecution. They, they, they don't just have yeah. the, you know, they couldn't just come and, you know. I have to say my father's in the faith. Um, the church that started here back in, in, the, in the late 70s, 70s, it wasn't a Western church. You see, we really, this church was really born out of the persecuted church because the, our father, who was a disciple of Watchman Nee, came out of uh, the communist country. So I have to say that for whatever reason God, for whatever reason it was, our roots in this local church really don't come from Western, the Western church. It really comes from the persecuted, suffering church in China. And that gave us a very great emphasis on the cross. While back in the 70s and 80s, some of you older folks will know what I'm talking about, most of the gospel people were hearing was, God has promises for you. He wants you wealthy, healthy, and, and, and that's, you know, this was the gospel. And we were preaching, there's a cross, and God wants you that's, transformed. But that's, what, but that's the biggest preachers in America today. That's exactly what they're preaching right now on TV. It's, exa it's not the gospel, but that's what they're preaching. And they mean well. Their hearts are in the right place. 
But that, that's, what, that's the message that is being propagated in the Western church. Bad theology. You don't know, my brother, my sister, you don't know how much you've been raised in bad theology your whole life. And what you think is your fault that you can't get a hold that you want God. Listen, you're not sitting here today because you're, you know, you, you're not, you're not, you're here because there's something in your heart. God has brought you here and there's something you're looking for from God. And so I'm saying to you, saint, child of God, because I would think that probably most of us are children of God in this place. But if most of us were really honest, you know what, give me that, uh, that first overhead, please, guys. Most of us, um, probably have actually almost been afraid. Oh, my gosh, it's so tiny. You can't really see much of it. Let, let me read it, and um, whoa. Okay, let me read it to you. There are many today who are not satisfied with their experience. Maybe this is you. Many have a constant self-condemnation together with a nagging sense that something's just not right between them and God. Many do not know why they're tempted, how to overcome their temptations, or how to conquer their sins. Often it feels like life's problems are defeating them, while at the same time their fears are obsessing them. Victory, it seems, is really equivalent to, well, my outer circumstance is changing. Okay, good, then I'll be happy my, my circumstances change. Sadly, for many sincere children of God, their walk consists of meetings, redoubling their efforts to do better, a prayer life that emanates mostly from their needs and therefore largely initiated by the devil, Inwardly, they're not free, and therefore they have no liberating message for others. Now, this is not to say there's no true knowledge of the Lord or real prayers answered, but as far as living in the rest of faith, the peace that passes understanding, or victory over sin, self, the world, and the devil, there's much lacking. Where's that now, from? Um, Jesse Penn Lewis, a very older, us older saints, because most of the stuff you get that really is valuable is older saints. Did you... I mean, we could sit in this. We mm. could sit in that. I, I, How's I think that? Later on, we need to like throw this on realm. Like these kinds of quotes, we need to like marinate in this stuff. Just live in it for a little while. You can't just hear it and go, "Oh yeah, I kind of get it." I think mm -hmm. you have to just sit there and study it. So, I, I mean, that's there's, I mean, there's there's a lot in there mm -hmm. really to go over. But mm -hmm. how many people it reson that resonates with you? Do you to feel someone, that anybody way? says that resonates a little bit. No. Right? Probably everybody think, in this room. I, I think so. Yeah. 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 And that's why I want to say, be excited. <laughs> be excited. You know, today you can have a, mir a miracle in your life today. See, we've been, so, we've been so fed this, well, it's going to take a really long time. And getting into the victorious life, well, you know, it's really good. But honestly, Struggle. honestly, yeah. the normal Christian life for a person who accepts Christ the day after can be, can be living in the knowledge that they're dead to sin. Sin has no power over them. They're freed from their old self, which we'll talk about. The devil has is, is, uh, been overcome. And that the world also is overcome. What, what does it mean to be dead to sin? Like you, you, you said that before. What would that mean for everybody? Like what does that look like? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, remember... The cross, is, the cross has a message for unsaved people, and, 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 the, and the message comes with the law. See, the law was never given for anybody to keep. The law was basically, until Christ comes, if you go by these rules, you won't, you won't really be a disaster. Your life will be okay. God's really interested in you having a okay life. When you say the law, you know. you're talking like Ten Commandments. I'm talking Ten Commandments. Testament. Yeah, okay. Okay. in particular. Okay, right. so the law was given... To show people, you know, till, I, till he came, the law was supposed to help them to kind of stay on track. Their lives wouldn't, uh, wouldn't go off the rails. But it was never, ever, ever, ever meant for people to keep and fulfill. Because God, it was given, hold on, for men to break. Now, uh, <laughs> it was given... So that you could see in yourself, there's no way. You are a hopeless sinner. You're hopeless. Hopeless. How do you feel? Good? Feel pretty good about yourself right now? Isn't that now? great? 
I don't know about you, but guys, I grew up in a traditional church, and we were in church on Sundays, and, you know, I, I was serious about trying to, I, I, I wanted to live for God. So, you know, I went to confession all the time, you know, when I could you and stuff like that. You grew up in the Catholic church. It's yeah. Interesting. yeah. Yeah. And you're not, you're not, that's not a disparaging, you yeah. know. You know. But the thing is Amen this, guys, when I heard the good news at 27 years old, that righteousness and having a right standing with God was a gift I just had to receive and I didn't have to, you mean all the confession and all the, the beads and all the, you know, all the prayers and all the, you know, all the, I, I'm trying so hard and you mean I don't have, none of that matters? It's kind of like Paul on the road to Damascus when the light came out of heaven and he fell off the horse and he said, and the light shone and he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, the one, the one you're persecuting, my people. You're persecuting me because you're persecuting my people. Everything Paul knew, yeah. he found out he was wrong about. When I left the Catholic Church, I'm not going to say everything, and I still have great, so much, so I still good, have yeah. respect for much in the church, but I couldn't live there. And I had to face, and a lot of people like us that came to know the Lord during those 70s when God was moving, people could not make that break. It's hard to make that break. You know what the devil said to all of us? Oh, you're going to hell. This, this is born again? What That's, is this born the, again it's thing? It's the cave. It's, it's the cave. You, you, get, you come out and you go, oh my gosh, I don't have to live that way. That's I don't right. have to live in shackles anymore. And you That's go, right. no, no, this is all I've known. That's right. That's right. If you are following the real Jesus... You will be uncomfortable. Abraham, come out from where you are. Uh, where am I going, Lord? I, I'll let you know. Wait, Christianity is not a life of ease, comfort, security? Are you sure? I thought it was supposed to be really easy. Yes, no? you certainly, you, if you're following the real Jesus, you're following him by faith one step at a time. And if today you're comfortable in your relationship coming to church hearing the pastor you know your small group meetings if you're comfortable God's out to shake you up he's out to shake up COVID was God allowing shaking up the church I'll tell you that that's always been my opinion breaking up you know well oh God you know even the meetings that we you know, that we couldn't meet anymore. How would you be in a, how would I be in a prison cell by myself? Like Watchman Nee for 20 years. How would you do if we didn't have pastor preaching to us and the that music? Was fun. I if I didn't, that. you know, if I didn't have the music group, hey guys, hey guys, yeah. I need some music. I need a little music. You know, how, how would we do? Because the Christian life is not about externals. The real Christian life. You mean external, when you say externals, what do you just, uh, put flesh to that. Yeah. What does that look like? Let, let me go one step further. First, I said that the traditional church I left was full of tradi was tradition, rituals, outward things. So, so all of us born-agains, which we were coming back, and God was recovering the truth that you need to be, it wasn't church going. You needed, to, you needed a new birth. You needed new life in you. And I, I could do that with my posters. I want, to, I want to do that this morning. But, you know, I, I could... Seriously, you really asking me to do this on Monday? Okay. Asking you to do what? Tell, yeah, yeah, I don't know what you're asking me to do on Monday. Did you ever think? Hey, um, did so, you ever think that you you're, that did you ever think this would ever ha like ever ever happen? Never. Never. I can't. You mean that any I'm sitting up on a right? I'm in church asking. No. You never. Questions. Never. I I don't it's know. Like a miracle. I right? should have treated you nicer probably when you were growing up. <laughs> um. I lost my train of thought. Where was I going? I'm sorry. I said ex uh, you said externals, like the church. Exter oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so said, then all of us like? born again came out. Guys, you don't understand. We came out in hundreds of thousands out of denominations. We came out of Lutheran churches. And, Linda, you're smiling and shaking your head. And Methodist churches and Catholic churches. And we were starving. And suddenly somebody was scratching the itch we had. And it was living. And we were like, what? You mean he's, I mean, I'll tell you the day in my living room when I got on my knees, the first thing out of my mouth was, he's a lot. You mean you're real? Because most people are think when you talk about Jesus, they're talking about historical Jesus. 
Because Jesus, we're we're singing that song today about, you know, Jesus is alive. Where do you think he's alive? The whole world says, oh, yeah, your Christianity, look at it. I mean, where do you see your Jesus? Because he's in the church. That's where he's resurrected. That's where he is. And to the degree that he's not free in his people, the world doesn't see him. But you see, the kingdom of God is within you. It's like a seed that starts in you, Jesus said. And it's, and it's, the kingdom of God comes without observation. So we're all looking for the gifts and the big miracles. Come, Jesus, with all the big stuff. And Jesus is kind of like, yeah, well, uh, this move is coming within the people of God, if you ask me. It's coming within you as a living water, as, an, in, uh, as a new uh, spring of life in you beyond anything that you've known before. Now... The evangelical, self-righteous, charismatic, superior mindset. We're all in the same boat as all the traditional churches we made fun of. Now we have our little rituals, and we've put Christ outside the door just the way traditional churches did, the denominations did all those years ago. And God is not having it anymore. Because Jesus Christ is the head of the church. He's still the head of the church. He didn't leave it for angels to come in. The angels can never make you spiritual. There isn't a thing you can do. You can't pray yourself spiritual. You can't uh, tithe yourself spiritual. You can't read your Bible and get more spiritual. Jesus Christ is what makes you spiritual. His life is the is the is life is what makes you spiritual and the church has lost this and please don't lose this on your way out the problem is the goal in christianity if you were to stop just for one second if i would ask you and i'm not going to put anybody in the spot but let me ask you if we would ask most christians today what do you think the goal of christianity is right now today it's so far from transformation It's not about what you're doing, saint. It's about who you're becoming. It's not about how much you have of Christ. You have as much of Christ as you'll ever have. You'll never, ever, ever, ever going to have more of Christ than you have now. How much does he have of you? The, the church. Say that again. It, it, it's not how much. You'll never have more of Christ. If you have Christ living in you. Listen, do you think, do you think, looking at the church, that this is what Jesus paid for? Do you think this is what Jesus paid for? You know, every time you're in a situation, the first thing you should really ask yourself is, so what did Jesus pay for for me to have in this situation? What did he free me of? You see, the thing is, All we're doing in the church is celebrating our sins are forgiven. Well, that's great, but what about my life today? Where is Jesus? Where am I in my relation? Where is the victory in my? Oh, thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. Are you more free of your anxiety and your fear? How about lust? And should we go down the list? How, How are you doing with that? Because we have not gotten a clear gospel. The gospel we've gotten is you need to fight and resist. You. And if you're really committed, and if you're really one of those, and you're committed, and you, every week people come up and go to the altar, I'm going yeah. to do better. I'm going to do better this time. Jesus, I'm so sorry. Forgive me, Jesus. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't. And the whole time, he's trying to get us to the place where he's saying, I, 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 I know. I know you really mean that. But you need the second half of the gospel. Not only are you a hopeless sinner without Jesus, you are a helpless saint. Good. Should I go to the overheads about? Okay, I'm not going to go to the overheads. I lost control of you a while ago, so I don't know what to say. It's like... I just like I'm making up for your childhood. I'm making up for your childhood. Okay, listen. Ignore him a second. Ignore him a second. Listen to me. I was going to put up, really I was going to put up, I was going to put up 
uh, scripture verses, but I'm not. I, I never know what I'm doing. You all know that. Just go. Have fun. Okay. Just have fun. I'll see you later. <laughs> see you later. I could give you, listen to me. Please, listen to me. You've got a gospel that says, imitate Christ. Oh, come on. Be nice. Stop being so angry. Be more loving to your wife. Come on, stop cursing and stop the list and the do list and the don't list and don't touch those drugs and get off the cigarettes. And that is what is being preached as Christianity. Resi if you're strong enough, if you're committed enough. It masquerades as the gospel. Masquerades as the gospel. It says, when Jesus says, the law... <laughs> was given to the sinners to show them they need, they need a savior. The law is given to the saints to show them they can't do it either. Paul, who was scrupulous with the law in Philippians when he was a Jew, then you see him in Romans 7 as a Christian. He says, I can't do this. Brothers and sisters, the whole New Testament is built on the fact that you, it's Christ in you, or you can't do it. In fact, when Jesus came on the scene, he kept up in the law. You know, the law says this. And the law says, you know, if you commit adultery, if you, if you sleep with, you're committing adultery. But I say, he keeps revering up the, like, oh, this is a great gospel. And I say, and if you even think about going to sleep with that girl, you've committed sin. Like, oh, <laughs> Thanks, Jesus. Wow, that's a relief, right? What was he doing? He was revving up the whole New Testament is built on the fact that if you are not in Christ, you cannot do it. And that's what he kept doing. Oh, when, the, when the ruler, rich, wrong, young ruler, say that fast, the rich, young ruler came to him, right? Hey, hey, you're going to be proud of me, Jesus. <laughs> I know those other guys over there are slouches, but you know what? I don't want to say anything, but I've kept all the commandments since I'm a kid, you know. And Jesus said, yeah, I know. But this one thing you lack, and it doesn't matter. He would have picked one thing for anybody. For him, it was, you know, but how about selling all you have to give to the poor? Yeah, hey, listen, I, my, oh, my wife, I told her I'd be home for dinner. Absolutely. <laughs> Catch you later. Because why? Was he just mean cruel to that man? No. He's showing that man, you think you can do it and please me. Brothers and sisters, God's waiting for you to stop trying to please him. Stop it. It's, it's the, <laughs> I was reading an article about New Age recently. You know what the New Age believes? You know, that God's in you. And you're just your own independent person, and um, you just, you just, you're good, you, you do what you want, and you're independent. You know, that's what we're learning, the same thing, that you independently do, you can please God and, and do good. See, this is what I was starting to say. The, we're being taught to imitate Christ, and I was going to give you a list. Now, I'll make sure you can get them on realm. The, Jesus his whole life, I'll give you the scriptures, said he was living out of the indwelling life of his father. He didn't speak his own words. He didn't look for his own glory. He didn't do his own will. What was he saying? He was now the new humanity, the way humans are supposed to be. Jesus was finally it. God got his final man, the way you're going to be exactly when God's, when God's got his total way with you. So Jesus always lived from his father. Philip says, well, Jesus, what are you talking about? Well, show us the father. He says, Philip, have I been with you so long? Don't you know that every word that's come out of me is the Father? And yet the church teaches us to imitate Christ. Well, you're supposed to imitate Christ. You know how? By living from an indwelling life inside of you. What does that look, but what does that look like? I know people in the room. Yes. Are I'm just getting them hungry first. I, I know. I know. I know. I'm I know. stopping you. Into, okay. what, what does that look like? We keep saying that, like living. What does it look like to live from that life? You're saying it's all about, you know, we, I, I don't, 
temptation and lust and this and that, whatever yes. the issue may be. So what, let's come yes. up with a tangible example you see. of what the, I, yeah. I know we're not into formulas and yes. steps. You see, this is the problem in the church. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. This is the problem. Here we go. This is the problem. Yeah, this is the problem. Well, uh, no, he's pastor, right. I know what you're saying, Mother pastor. dear, yes, tell them. I, I know what you're saying. What is it? You know what I mean. What does it look like for everybody? What does victory look like for somebody this week in living from another life, the exchange mm -hmm. life, the mm -hmm. normal Christian life? Mm -hmm. What does it look like, wise mm -hmm. sage? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Smart mouth. Um, I'm serious, though, right? Yeah, I, mean, I, I know I think, you are. Yeah, I, 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 think, I am, too, honestly. You are, and I am, too. Does anybody, and remember, remember something, that the scripture says... The mystery that was hid through all the ages, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So remember, it's a mystery. Remember, nobody can make Christ real to you. Nobody. Turn to someone next to you and say, nobody can make Christ real to you. <laughs> Nothing you do can make Christ real to you. Only Christ can make himself real to you. But I can tell you this. It means this. It means that when, when sin comes, I hate to go here already, but okay. Sin comes knocking at your door. Well, the question is, do we as a church believe Romans 6 that says, sin shall no longer lord it over you because you're dead to sin? Now, who believes that? See, basically, we think the answer is fighting it. Resisting it. The answer is, you're already dead to it. But you don't know it. And so, therefore, when you feel the pull, which you will feel the pull on your flesh, which is your body and your soul, when you feel the pull of temptation, temptation is not a sin. Because you're an earthen vessel that feels those things. And most of us, the devil beats up because we feel like doing something we know is sin. Well, that isn't sin. Jesus was tempted, so how could that be sin? Temptation. So when temptation comes, what will be the two different groups? The one group will say, oh, oh I, I've got to fight it in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father, I just, I, I'm not going to give in to this. And I'm, I'm, this time Please. I'm serious. And, Fight or flight. Okay, so that's, that's what, what most of the church is doing. Victory looks like this. Hmm. <laughs> you told me to abide in you, didn't you, Lord? You said, don't come out now because the devil's trying to get you in this arena. So, Linda, just, just stand in my victory. But, Jesus, I can feel it. I feel like I do want to do that. I, I do want to say that. I know you do, my daughter. But that isn't the real you. That's just your soul and your feelings. The real you is me in you, That's in your good. spirit. Get it. You, my daughter, you've got to get your identity straight. You're not your feelings. You're not your thoughts. You never can be. If you are a born-again child of God, you are in union with Jesus Christ, and nothing and no one, I don't care what you feel like, I don't care whatever happens, you cannot be ununioned from him. Can I interject with another sure. question now? <laughs> so okay. if you can't, so the, the union that's there, that can't be broken. So what about the person that's sitting here right now and says, what about when I sin? That's right. You've, Okay. Don't Talk forget that because I'm going to come to that. Don't, don't forget that. I'm going to come to there. You see, 99% of the church believes this one thing that kept me in bondage for decades and is keeping you in bondage too. And this is the lie. You and I were taught that when you're born again, you have the, God comes to live inside of you. Everybody with me? But we were also taught that we still have a sinful nature that we have to deal with, right? It's kind of like the cartoons with the little white guy on the shoulder here and the little black guy over here. Okay, 
all right, who are you going to feed today? In Jesus' name today, I'm not feeding, I'm not going to feed my flesh. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to feed, I'm going to feed the, the right part of me. That has kept the church in such bondage. Do you think Jesus Christ went through everything he went through, through the cross, went to hell to get you, got to the throne again? He did not want to, he does not want to live in heaven without you. Do you think he went through all that to share you and live in you with Satan at one end and him at the other end? That is insanity. He has come to live in your spirit. And just because you can sin does not make you a sinner. You have now Wait, have the... De- Wait, just you because need to repeat you can that again. sin... Sorry, you have to repeat that again. Just be- Everybody you needs feel to like you're that. a sinner just because you can sin. And I'm going to tell you why you can sin. But you're, as far as God is concerned, you're holy, you're blameless, you're without spot. There's nothing between you and God right now, this minute. But Linda, you don't know what I did. I don't care what you did. If you sinned, okay, now the religious people, all the religious are going to run out of the doors. (laughs) Your sins are already forgiven. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. Brothers and sisters, well, then, you're gonna, you know what the first answer is? Exactly what Paul got. Well then, well, then why don't we, so then we should just sin more then, so grace should abound. Of course not, Paul said. Sin comes with a price. You sin, you're going to pay consequences, but you'll be forgiven. You're already forgiven. Yeah. Don't ever go to God and ask him to forgive your sins, because he would say to you, I already did forgive that, but I would... Do you know what sin is? It's an act, a thought, a behavior that's totally void of the life of God. That's what it is. So how come I can sin still, Linda? All this big talk about I'm not, you're not, your identity is no longer a sinner. Your identity now is a child of God. The blood of Jesus speaks for you. You can go to God anytime. You are, you are you are righteous before God. That means just as if he sees you as exactly as he sees his son. Don't yell at me. Go look at John 17. This is what Jesus said. I didn't say it. This isn't your idea, my idea. This is his idea. You are righteous. The gospel. Paul was persecuted by religious people, and religious people will always persecute the spirit by saying that can't be. How can you say these people are all right with God? Yes, By faith, it's true. Now, 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 now. How come, if that's true, I still sin? I wish I had a few hours. This is really hard. Christ is in your spirit. But then you have a soul that's got your mind, your will, and your emotions. And then you've got a body. Your body is just used to going, oh, yeah, that's right, I need that, yeah. Your soul is just used to leading the show. Your emotions, well, I, I know God may say that, but I'm just the way I feel right now. It's just, a, and we're living in the feeling culture, aren't we? It's all about how do you feel today? Your soul and your body are practiced at doing sin. And so with Christ in your spirit, now your, your soul and your body feel the pull of sin on you. And if you don't know what we're talking about now in this church, that you're already an overcomer. You're already defeated sin because you were in Christ when he defeated sin, and it's mocked on your account. You have victory over sin today, my brother, my sister. You are, uh, sin cannot lord it over you if you know it. And then, go ahead. And then this is really important. The battle is won in one way, just like when you got saved and you found out your sins were forgiven. How did you get it? You received it by faith. You know how you win? This, you know how you walk with Christ and you, and you walk and overcome sin? By faith. So, Father, I thank you right now. That right now I feel that pull, Lord. You, I feel that pull to do that, to say that. That's not really who I am anymore. And actually the real me really doesn't really even want that. 
because you live in me. So, Lord, I just thank you right now for the victory. I'm all, that's a lie. I just want to thank you. You live in me, and it has no power over you, and you and I are one. So, Lord, thank you right now for the victory. <laughs> he thinks he's got me. I got news for you, devil. You were defeated at Calvary, and I was in your victor, and you are absolutely powerless over me. Stop praying and start declaring truth. Stop asking God to do what he's already done for That's you. Yeah. Lord, please forgive me my sin, Lord, and then please free me from this sin. Oh, God, I just want to be free from this so much. Lord, please, I'll, do, I'll fast and pray, Lord. I'm fasting and praying. Jesus, do, do you see me? I'm fasting and praying because I help me get free of this, I, this hatred I have. I, I, we can go down. The, the fear, you can go down. Lord, please free me. What do you think Jesus is saying? Oh, I did that 2,000 years ago. So would you say then, would it be an apt characterization to look at Christianity uh -huh. as not as a religion? Like we say, what religion do you follow? Mm -hmm. like, Christianity is not a religion. It's not a religion. It's not a religion. We categorize it as a religion. But it's everything we're hearing and talking about what the gospel really is, it's, it's not a religion. But that's what. That's right. That's, that's, that's the right. That it's a life you live. It's a life you see, you live. in the garden, when Adam and Eve fell, what, what did the devil say? What did God say? The day you eat, you're going to die. Well, we know they didn't die in their bodies, but they died in their ability to be connected to God. So every person that's born is born with a, with a spirit that is not functioning. It's not in touch with God. That's why you have to be born again. Because your spirit is dead. So when you talk to an unsafe person about coming to Christ, we're not just saying, have your sins forgiven. What we're saying is, you have, new, you have a life you've never had before because you don't... You don't even realize when Jesus comes and you give him your life, you won't, you won't believe the fact that a, his actual life is going to come inside of you. It's not just having my sins forgiven. It's about living under the influence. It's about a new way of living. It's about a whole new life comes to take over. Lord, take over because I just, I'm, I'm ready to do this today, Lord, and I can just feel the pressure of dread. Oh, oh, that's right. Give me Romans 5, guys. Give me Romans 5, 10. Oh, oh, that's, that's right. You live in me, and you don't have dread. You're full of peace and confidence. Oh, huh. oh, I forgot, Jesus. That's right, that's right. I love this, I love this. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. See, that's the blood. Much more having been reconciled. Now there's something more. Will be saved by his life. How are you saved by his life? How are you saved? Every day you're saved by his life. You're not, Christianity is not living out of your own resources and helping that God is going to be pleased with you because you're being a really good boy today. In fact, being good out of yourself is just like Cain and Abel. Okay. Too much. I want you to go to the. I want you. Oh, to I'm being told to sit down. <sighs> oh, you to. No, no, no. I wasn't oh, saying the seat. I thought you tell me to sit down. We should, oh. You want to close with the See how obedient I am. You know, I, I, it, I'm not saying this because you're my mother and I'm your son, but I just I'm sitting up here. I'm going, man. This is like that. I'm just so glad that this is taped, and we'll have this, and our kids will have. Really. I Thank you. Sorry. I want to dispel something the devil, the devil is bringing to this church because I heard a few of you say it to me. Well, gee, you know, like you don't do anything in your life and you've just done nothing but read and stuff. And if it took you this long, what am I expecting, right? <laughs> don't be so sure that you know about what I do in my house anyway. But um, <laughs> the breakthrough is here. I, there may be a few of us on the spearhead of it, but there's never anything for us. Uh, a few individuals. 
I have to put in a word, I have to put in a, just a quick word that's going to look like I'm going off the, the, the reservation, but I'm going to come back, I promise. We don't understand. I'll let you know. Go ahead. Okay. It is off the reservation. You're not going to like it, but hold on. <laughs> God is, you know what God is doing right now? And he's always been doing? He's building a dwelling place for himself. He is putting stones together. He doesn't want to live in heaven. He wants to live in his people. Heaven is not about us going to this fairyland. It's God dwelling in his people. Look at, look at Revelation 21. When, when heaven comes down to earth, he's, uh, you know why I'm telling you this today? Because it's burning in my heart today. Because people don't understand how important the church is. We think, oh, I'll go to church and maybe I'll try that church over there. I heard some good things. The music is good over there. We, we don't realize. You're, one, of your jo- one of the things that you're here for is to learn to be built together with other people. Like if you think you're just going to be some independent, me and Jesus, yeah, yeah, no, I don't settle down with anybody. Yeah, <laughs> good. Just really? Because you're not going to do well up there. We, this is the time for God to, that's why I see people that come into the church and I see, you know, every church is like an organism. We have like a seasons in our lives. We have seasons in the church where it's, you know, everybody's hopping and yay, Jesus is moving. Then you have seasons in the church like, gee, did they all leave? The whole three rows are missing. Like seasons, you go through seasons in a church. Who sticks if you really understand that you're supposed to be learning how to be built together with other brothers and sisters for a dwelling place in God. That's what Jesus is doing. We wouldn't be so haphazard about, well, you know, church is about, well, you just come and what I get, and, you know, and if I feel like it, and I'm a volunteer, and I don't feel like doing that, and, you know, we don't understand. It is not about religion. It's not about checking off the box that you come to church on Sunday. It's about He's building one new man. He's building. He said, I will build my. They're better than you are. You didn't even get. I will build <laughs> my to, church. I don't know if you wanted me to say it. And the <laughs> gates of. The, it's too late now. The <laughs> gates of hell will <laughs> not prevail. He's building people together. Are you a part of what he's doing? Or are you some independent, I'm over here and I do my own thing and I didn't like what they said. And honestly, I'm a little offended the way they did that meeting the last week. You know, honestly, I don't know how I feel about women anyway with microphones in their hands. Uh, how are you doing? Did I get anybody? Everybody maybe? You hit a lot of, you hit you, a lot of you us. You nailed it. Find out the company of people he's put you with. Because it matters just like it does in a marriage. It matters to God that you lay your life down hey, for that know, company. You know and I say that because, <laughs> and I say that because when I said this isn't about me, this isn't about me, there's nothing you do just for you. Because you know why? You know why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is really important, so don't make them get distracted. This is really important. The person who lives for others has come to live in you. The per- you can't trust him if you give him your life. He's going to take over your life, and he's going to lay it down for other people. And it's not just you four and no more. It's not just me and my kids and my kids' kids. It's are you on the same plan that he is. Do you see the vision that God is doing, Father is doing? He's building a people for his own habitation. That's what the new Jerusalem is. Don't lose out. Not only does the church not recognize Christ as the head, not only does the established church not only understand that your sinful nature, that that you're of divine nature, you're not called to imitate Christ, you're called to participate in his life. You know the difference? I'm not called to imitate him, I'm called to participate in his life. See the difference? Not only that, but the church, people do not understand, and this was watch me, 
This is my father. The revelation of what the local church is. God has the top plan. Look at it. The church to letter to Ephesus. Church to Philippi. It's all through the New Testament being built together. This is not just about you coming here on Sunday. It's good. Um, this is not just about me. Oh, isn't it good? I've got some new truth that I'm sharing with you. This is like, this is nobody shines in this place but him. Okay. I'm out. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So good. Thank you. I, I think I, I, I I'm gonna we're gonna bring this no, to no. yeah. <laughs> For years, yeah. you told us what to do. Now we're telling you. I know. They do it all the time. Listen. Too. Who's the old, who, who are the grandparents that know what I'm talking about? Hey. I say to them, when did it turn around and you become the parent? So what's really, yeah, what's really interesting to me is I, I, I'm, I'm sitting up here and I'm thinking, uh, Pastor Joe has taken notes in every sermon for years, years, years. So I'm watching him take notes here this morning, what you're saying, and, and going on what you just said. I worry that this will dissipate if we don't get together and actually talk about it. I'm so done with traditional sermons. You can, you can hear great sermons, but what are we doing with what we were given, what was cooked up, with the message that we're getting? Mm -hmm. The only way to, to, to take this, moving out of the building, is to actually get in groups and to talk about this. The only way to do it is to listen to it again, not just to be the, the Christian that I went to church and I kind of did my job because that's the, the message that most people have. God, I did it, right? I did good. I went to church today. Yeah. I could have slept in, but I went here. No, I, I think we need to contend for this. Well, we need to give people the, the vision of, of what they're doing. It's not their fault. I've just yeah, I get, yeah. This is what's th th been bred. Oh. Nice. Hey. Still got it. Woo. But, I, I think you see what I'm saying? I think it's important because you have so much material and there's so much here. I I think everybody already is on overload with, oh my gosh, that was so good. Oh, that was so good. Oh, that was so good. Can we stop? It's eleven thirty-five. How about five minutes? Does anybody have a, <laughs> scary doing this? A question though, on anything that you heard or a where are you going? My glasses, my oh, glasses. Okay, I thought you were leaving me by myself. <laughs> Does anybody have it from what you heard here this morning? Go ahead. What do you have? Hey, be before, before you answer that, right, before you answer that, I looked. It was funny you brought up Watchman Nee. There's no, like, there's no documentary that I could appoint people to to watch. I know the biography, Against the Tide. Like, there, there are books, but there's no... Right, go ahead. Oh, he's got some great chapters. Yeah, but go ahead. What, what would you he's say? Got some, I can give you some of his wise, great chapters. What would you say if somebody I would is say, looking I would say the one we just found Dan a few weeks Stone ago, Dan Stone, up, the, the, other the, gospel, the other half of the gospel. The other half of the gospel And really Steve good. McVeigh does a, a pretty good job of, of I think. Uh, I have tons of books on my, let me see. Um, let me I, see. I, this is the another guy who's would, a little bit more academic, James A. Fowler. It's a little bit more academic. I liked it. I started reading it you last reading night. That one? Grace Walk by Steve McVeigh is is really good. Yeah, that's his testimony that's about really how he came good. out of religion. I think too. for everybody that is just getting exposed yeah. to this, I think that would be really good. And to do it in the context of a group and to talk about it, that's yeah. the problem with the, the church. Yeah. We just do this. We have our meeting and yeah. everybody just yeah. goes. Yeah, and I just want to keep <laughs> saying it's not your fault. No, I know. Of course it's not, not your fault. This is what we were presented. Will Hunting. It's not this your fault, Will. We, yeah, that's right. It's not your it's fault, your Will. Fault, Will. We, this is what we've been presented as the Christian life. No wonder people are, and our young people are flocking out the doors. No wonder we're like, oh, if I can make. Um, no wonder more we're rules. not. More rules. More, more, rules, more rules. And this. no power. And no yeah. power. I want to yeah. tell you, please hear me. Please hear my heart. Guys, you know, don't look at me. I'm like, like if God can do it in me, he can do it in anybody. Miss fearful, miss, you, you name it. But you know what? The, the, the power that I've had in my life these last years, I don't live in, victor, I don't live in anxiety. I, I, I live in a, a state of uh, victorious thinking. Like, you know, I wake up and, and it's kind of like I have this sentence that I say, you know what? Nobody and no circumstance today is going to tell me who I am or how I am today. Because I know who I am. 
and I know how I am. And you want to know, that's my brother too. He's just, wait Where are you going? You. Listen, how I am. In other words, in other words, nobody, no circumstance is going to tell me how I am today. You should be really afraid, Linda, today because you've got a doctor's appointment. And that should be, you should be really upset after what she said to you last week. Nobody is going to tell me how I am today except Jesus Christ. And he tells me, he tells me I'm, I'm redeemed. He tells me he, I have his peace. He tells me I have his victory. He tells me I have his confidence. He tells me I have his, his uh, calmness. He and I say, Jesus, that's right. Oh, 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 how silly of me. I forgot again. That's right. That's right. You live in me. Oh, I'm so relieved, Jesus. I'm so glad I have to live through today. You're, you're living for me today. Amen. You heard the story, some of you. I'm not going to go through it. I know that. I'm not going to go through it. But the girl in the jewelry counter in Macy's, it's, it, it, it was, what do you get up for? You say, Jesus, how do you, what do you, what do you want to do today? Is there somebody you want to, somebody you want to talk to today? Is there somebody you want to love through me today? It's believing and then you find out. I mean, I had it happen in a store again the other day. What was it, Megan? I told you there was another one. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, yeah, there was another, there was another. And I just realized, oh, yeah, 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 another store. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say the word, but there was a girl that waits on us a lot, and she's really, really troubled, and she's, you know, into stuff you know she's not supposed to be into. And we were talking, and you know, I've been listening to her for a long time, and I talk to her, I just listen, don't say anything. And then I got brought up Jesus, and I know she hears about him in, in, in the store that she's in. And I brought him up in a way, I don't even remember how I did it, but I could see the cloud come over her eyes, like, mm, yeah, whatever. Uh, you, you know, you talked to him, and I could say, I said, oh, okay, okay, back up, back up, back up. And then came out of my mouth this. I said, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. You're not into that yet. I said, I, I'm just going to ask you then, um, if it's not going to be Jesus, like, what is going to be the rock you're going to stand on in your life, honey? Because life is tough, and you're going to get hit by that. I'm just kind of curious now. What, what's, how are you going to handle the tough places in life? Because, you know, we all have them. Like, so what are you going to be depending on? And she looked at me, and her eyes were kind of like fluttering, and I thought, I said, well, yeah, well, you think about it. You think about it. I walked away, and I thought, Jesus, I can't believe you said that. You're asking a question that. she's never I asked I can't before. believe you said that to her. It was so clear to me that somebody else took over my life during that conversation. I have never thought in a thousand years of saying that. I'm going to sit down now. Yep. <laughs> All right. No, really. I could, I, I, I could you feel his you. vibes from the back going, You know if this was, well, yeah. Down. No, no, no. This, I, no, I get it. You're it is, excited. It is. You're Don't excited. say no. It is. Yeah. I, I get it. You're excited. Yes. I Does anybody have, a, I just want to throw it out to you. because this, 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 Do you realize, wait, John Morgan. do you realize, somebody texted me in here. I'm not going to say, somebody texted me in there right. They're like, this is church. This is the way it's supposed to be. It's not religion to have a conversation and you kind of just, you go, in a good way, you go off the rails and yep. you go off script because we had a script. You didn't follow the script, <laughs> right? You clearly didn't follow the script Shocker. that we had. Shocker. But no, this is so Shocker. good and so living. So Shocker. even doing this, I just, I, I love I it. John, yeah, go ahead, John. Really you want the mic try. or no? Kind of consequences right. do we have for the story? Okay, I'll give you a consequence. You act like a jerk, and your wife is not going to be very nice to you, is she? Not you, because no, you're always nice to your wife. I mean, but somebody else in here that's married. I mean, it's that simple. I mean, if you're, if you're, you know, if you live outside, if you, if you're living out of your flesh and self, you, you're just gonna, you know, and you're gonna get, you're gonna get. You're going to reap what you sow. Yeah, you said that over there. You had, you it, it's not that God's going to come after you. Let's just stop with this thing about God being this big oh, tyrant in the sky. He sent his son because he loves us to get us back. I can't handle that. But, <laughs> but we do it ourselves. We, we do it ourselves and we live out of our flesh and we live out and we sin. Well, sin can be all kinds of different forms, right? And self-centered, you know, just walking around and, and, and um, 
listen, entertaining sin in, in our minds, like regurgitating in our minds how much of, against people and having a thought life that is from, you know, not from Christ. We have, we have repercussions of it. We get, yeah. somebody put, somebody said, uh, talking about mental health, well, sin is not good for your mental health. And I thought that should be on every school, That's good, yeah. every school yeah. hallway. Yeah, because sin brings you consequences. Who All right, you answer. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you're done. You're two I'm minutes done. on. You're done. done. Okay. Yeah, not one. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and grace is this, Janine. Grace means God does something for you. Grace, and what does law mean? You do something for God. It is the grace message. Go ahead. All right, anybody else before John, we leave? Oh, George, I know, John, listen, yeah. it's amazing to me too, though. Yeah. All the things that we sit through and we go, I'm good, I'm, I can just sit. This is yeah. life. This is life. Yeah. So yeah. for me, I'm like, and there's yeah. no, the Super Bowl's not till next week anyway. Yeah. So this is like a week off. Yeah. So, you know, football yeah. enthusiasts have a, anyway. Yeah. Is Can, anybody else, is there a comment or a question that you may have on the way out the door that you feel like, yeah, so you see the two, I see, I, I, you know what, as a, as a pastor, as a preacher, when you see the phones go up like that, it's just, you feel, I mean, Feels good, right? I see people with their phones up. I'm going, that person's going to be reading a book this week. That person's going to pick a book up this I, week. I, I haven't really read the whole thing of the rest of the gospel. I was pouring through it. Yeah. I, Yesterday, I read, it's yeah, good. It's good. It's I good. Read, it's really good. It's just good. don't listen to the guy speak. Yeah. It's yeah, just bad. Like, bad. If you have insomnia, like, he'll, yeah, put, yeah, he'll, yeah, yeah. he'll cure it. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Last, um, last call. Comment, question on the way out the door. We're good. Chris? I'm not moved by you. That's right. That's right. That's good, Chris. I got to do this. Because the old way for me was, the old way for me was temptation would come. And I would say, oh, that's right, I'm crucified with Christ. Uh, Lord, I'm standing on the finished work that you did. I'm crucified. When I felt the pull of my feelings, I felt dejected like, I guess it's not working. I, guess I, just, I still, if you don't know that you're not, you're, it's, it's not, who, that's right, expect the pull. Expect your soul and your body to feel it because you're an earthen vessel. And so you feel it in this life. You feel the pull. Jesus was tempted. The key is revelation knowledge. Oh, <laughs> you again? Oh, didn't I, didn't I tell you yesterday? Just take that to somebody else who doesn't know they're already victorious over it. Take that away. That's not who I am anymore. I'm not that anxious person anymore. See, he took away, and we'll get it another time. He took away the two biggest problems you have. He took away sin, and he took away your self-life. That self in you that has been uh, the fearful you, the offended you, the, um, the uh, proud, uh, the you that has caused you nothing but problems. You don't see, we don't see it clearly yet, but it's the you. Oh, that's right. That's not who I am anymore. I don't have to respond to that. Oh, Satan, oh, it felt so real. It feels like it's me, but I'm not fooled anymore. That's not who I am, right? I'm a new creation in Christ. Would Jesus respond to that? Well, he wouldn't. 
well, then why am I? Because Jesus and I are one. Teachers oh. and the kids are going to revolt. Soon okay, too. okay. So we have just, to end just, just. Out the third door. Wednesday of every month, uh, I'm, but, I'm talking this way. Yeah, but we need to, and, and, and this is yeah. incumbent upon us as yeah. leaders. We want to make this as uh, the word uh, as sticky as possible. Yeah. Like to, that it sticks. That this is the vision and the foundation. So those are things that we're going to be doing to incorporate into yep. the life of the church. Yep. And, so and the fourth Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Yeah. And we're going to meet as a church. And I have some feelings. I feel like the Lord wants, wants us to do something for 40 I days. I almost feel like you should do like this again. You're not even done with that. There's so much. Oh, I would love to come back and do my posters with the soul. Yeah, I think next week we have to. We'll talk. Yeah. Oh, no, no not kill, now. He'll kill me. I'm going to do a Sunday on his life. I felt compelled to do a, I like to do historical biographies. Like I've done it on yeah. people before. Yeah. I'll, I'll just, I'll live in it for, yeah. I already have, I but would, I'll, I really would love, I'll do that one week. I don't care where you are today. I don't care how you feel today. This is a new day for you. It doesn't matter if you're steeped in sin, if you're not born again, if Jesus isn't real to you, it doesn't matter. That can change just like this. I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you, hang on, uh, go to God and tell him you, listen, the people that will right now are, are, are kind of like at the time, you know, kind of like most are people that have tried to please God so much already that this will be good news to them to know that they're free from the law. And, and because the law, trying to live it is what gets you ready for the, for the news that you're already free. So I just want to say to you, uh, those that are really most hungry are, are, are probably the ones that are going to you know, feel immediately uh, some direct result. But please, please, I don't care where you are or who you are. This is for you today. God knows you. God went, Jesus went to the cross for you. He paid the price for you to live in victory. He, he paid the price for you to come out of your sin out of the love of the world or, uh, or the bondage of whatever your bondage is, he's already paid the price. The, the last Don't comment I'm going to say is I'm going to make, the, I, I want this transcribed, and we'll, we'll have to pull out some of the points, and I want it in front of people. I'll help even look at that. We can look at that together. Okay. Are there just some of the things it's that I think people need to? Really good. They have, yeah. We We're have. Really yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he went off the yeah, uh, but that's every and it's everybody, that's right. So it's every everybody. We, yeah, we can we can put our finger on None of us have all the answers. We're not perfect. I'm None the of only us one. Are. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Hey, have a great week. We'll see you.